a significant difference between traditional automotive safety and autonomous vehicle safety is that not only does the system have to detect and react to faults, but it has to keep operating even after a fault has been detected. The issue is that simply slamming on the brakes at highway speeds is unlikely to result in a safe outcome if that's the only response available to an equipment failure. That means there needs to be redundancy in two different regards. The first part of redundancy is to detect that the main operational channel has had a fault so that you know there's something that you have to react to. The second piece of redundancy required is being able to maintain vehicle operation even though the primary channel has failed. There are many different architectural approaches that can be used for this, and the industry has not yet sorted out which architectural approach or approaches will be standardized. This architecture example is from the BMW Voluntary Safety Self-Assessment Report and is therefore public information. The architecture has three channels for control. The first is a main channel, which is in normal use. The second channel is a safe channel. The idea in general is that if the main channel has a problem, the safe channel can recover from whatever's going on and bring the vehicle to a safe state, for example, by pulling over to the side of the road. However, because the main and the safe channels are both on the same ECU, there's the possibility that both channels will fail due to an ECU failure. That means a second ECU for degraded operation is required. The idea here is to have a very simple, very unlikely to fail control system that can bring the car to a safe stop, but maybe not in the optimal location that you'd prefer. The important takeaway here is that there will be significant amounts of functional and hardware redundancy in these vehicles, and that making sure all the redundant channels don't fail at the same time is especially important.